Welcome everyone back to another video here on the Pommy in Oz channel. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Stay up to date with all the off-season content. We're over the cow and um, massive journey into the finals. So we'll be covering all the AFL, totally unabashed and unbiased. We'll be doing in-depth reviews of all the clubs and their seasons. You've got the Leck Dog and Pom show that's coming up uh, on Wednesday where we go through your list needs from all the teams from 18 to 1. We've done 18 to 13. We'll be doing 12 to 1 on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. We've got draft profiles coming, and today we're doing something super exciting. So if you want to become a member, do that. Link is in the description. Stay up to date with all of that. We'll be doing some live streams and some Q&As and things like that. And what we're doing today is the brown low, but we're calling it the pom low. We're going from 10 to 1, and we'll get straight into it. In a 10th place, we have someone who has had a phenomenal year, and that is Mr. Tim Taranto. We have got him polling three votes in round one. He polls incredibly well towards the middle as well when they have that little surge it must be said but we've got him polling three in 11 12 and 14 as well with 25 votes it was an up and down year but that real middle part of the year was really solid for him particularly round seven to round 14 he really stood out for them and in a 10th place we've got timmy t who has probably been one of the few standouts for Mr. Richmond Tigers. In at nine with 26 votes, Jordan Dawson. And I've got him polling three votes, four and five. There was that fantastic seven to nine where he gets eight out of nine votes. Decent middle back end, that two and three votes. We've got him in 15 and 16. But really doing well to get into the top 10. And it just shows how strong the AFL is with talent that we've got players represented here from outside of the eight. They're not all clustered around there. But John Dawson, absolute phenomenal. John Rory Laird obviously polls really well as well. We've got him just outside the top 10. That'll be a wait and see. As you know, with players like that, you're going to have votes taken away from you. But then we go to eight in at eight. And probably one of my favourite footballers. He polled three votes versus us in round 24. Tom Green at GWS. Got him polling three votes in round 21. A real good start. And he'll be there and thereabouts. There is a guy called Toby Green who has historically polled well in this. This will be a tough one. But genuinely, when you look at this, players with contested numbers who are getting in and under, they do poll well. See Mr. Patrick Cripps, see Matt Pridis, probably one of the most unheralded Brownlow winners. And I think Tom Green is just an absolute exceptional footballer, really stands out and does all that hard stuff. And I expect to see him in the top 10. Up next, in at 7... Probably the best wide player in the league in Errol Golden. We've got him polling three, particularly a lot in the back half of the year when Sydney really came from nowhere. Round 16 starts that three parade, if you will. Round 18, three votes. Round 20, three votes. Round three for the last two games as well, with a grand total of 26. He has had a terrific year and really stood out. And he's a real eye-catching footballer as well because he does a lot of them shifting side runs, a lot of them diagonal runs as well around stoppage and contests, which we know the umpires poll really well. They had a lot of credence onto that. And I reckon he will be a real good smoky for a top five. In at six, former winner, Lockie Neal. And this one here... He is definitely the standout pole getter there. He'll have votes taken away from him from Josh Dunkley, particularly in that middle crooks year. But this guy stood up. Having five votes out of six in the last two rounds, a couple of threes in 17 and 19, round 10. He's a shoe in for round five and round seven as well. He'll pole well. He always does. And Lockie Neal is a terrific footballer, it has to be said. He's one of them guys that... Just formulates the ball in the right areas for Brownlow voting. He'll always be there and thereabouts as long as he plays. He's one of them players that really does stand out. 
and he does that creative stuff and sneaks in with a goal as well. And you know the Brownlow motto, if you have 20 touches and kick a goal, you're a shoe in for two votes. So he will definitely be just on the outskirts of five. Could see him going even higher, dependent on how the umpires see the games. In at five, probably many people's selections for this, Marcus Bontepelli starting off terrific. And this is where the odds I always think are interesting in the first 12 rounds. Paul in a staggering 15 round, 15 in the first 12 rounds. Um, he will have had three, 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 three from three to six. Um, definitely there. Towards the end of the season, though, the doggies really did start to have some performances. Timmy English, Adam Trelaw, Bailey Smith had them couple of games in the mid-year. Hugo Hagen had them games. Caleb Daniel had a day out. Bailey Williams and Bailey Dale as well will help take votes off him. Very, very spread midfield, which shows just how good Marcus Bontepelli is. 32 in at number five. In at four. Probably the most improved year before we get to the surprise Brownlow winner. But in at four, Zach Butters, an absolute terrific footballer. When you look at Paul, all the media focus on players like Connor Rosie, Zach Butters is a Brownlow magnet for votes. And we've got him polling the perfect nine from round eight to ten, round twenty-three to twenty round twenty-one to twenty-three. He'll poll well. Round five, he had a terrific game and he was a standout. From that round five point, he has been most consistently their best player. Connor Rosie will take votes off him, but I do think because of the contested brand and the way he plays the game, it will definitely appeal to the AFL. And they'll definitely look at it and go, yeah, you know what? He is fantastic. He is a terrific footballer. In at number three... What a footballer this guy is as well. What a footballer he is. Christian Petrarca. He is a guy that has come from nowhere. And he had such a strong, steady year as well. You look at it, a lot of two votes, a lot of threes. Round six, round seven and round nine, he'll poll three. Round 12, a lot for three. He has had a real solid year. And he's one of these players that you really do look at and you're surprised. That... Round seven game, he was insane, right? Do you know what I mean? Three score assists and he took apart the first term. That is usually how it does them standout ones and it will be absolutely phenomenal. But he will definitely be inside that top three voting. In a two, but there is an asterisk because the winner we've got is ineligible is Nick Dacos with 33, tied with Petrarca and Butters. It could be a three-way win. And the, and Nick Dacos had a phenomenal year. The start of the year, it is insane. Do you know what I mean? Out of a maximum of 18 votes, we've got him polling 14. In the mid-year, that round 15 to 18, he'll have maximum votes there. Round 11 and 12 before the bye, maximum votes there. He'll definitely be up there. And he is a terrific footballer. As a blue, he's a player that I enjoy watching. He gets on the outside. He makes things happen. A lot's made of his contested work. But let's be having it right. What he does with the football is absolutely insane. And for a man that has 11 career votes to in his second year poll 30 plus, just shows you yeah, the magnitude of it. But the winner of the Pomelo... We don't have in ineligibility here. Is Caleb Sarong polling 35 votes? That suspension is going to cost him. I think it will cost him in real life as well. We haven't had many of these tales, but this looks like going to be one of them where the ineligibility will get him. That round 17 is going to kill him, but you look at his year, it's been phenomenal. Got him polling three votes in round three. Three votes in round five. Three votes 19 to 21. Three votes in round 24. It is sad that in the brown law he won't poll, but he will poll terrifically well. He is a real standout for that. And although he's ineligible for the brown law, he's eligible for the POM law medal. And he wins it. 
two of our top 10 feature. I have got a little book, so if you are interested, I'll put a link up and we'll find a way of sharing it with you. I'll share it on my socials if you want. But what a phenomenal year. For those watching along at home, um, we've got some real terrific footballers. And I'll give you your leading vote getters for your respective clubs. But if you are obviously an Adelaide fan, we've got Dawson being the winner of your votes with 26. If you are a Brisbane, that's Lockie Neal, obviously 27. Cow and Blues, we've got a tie. Cripps and Kerno on 17 votes. Kerno obviously will poll pretty well, 19, 20 and 23. But Cripps had a very solid start to the year with a lot of two votes, as you expect. We've got him polling three round 16. We've got him polling three round three. That will be a very interesting to watch. Collingwood, obviously Nick Dacos, no surprise with 33. That is a lock. Essendon, Essendon Football Club, we've got Zachy Merritt on 21. He was just outside the top 10, it has to be said. Fremantle, we've got Sarong. If you don't count that, Brayshaw will be there with 15. GWS, as you know, Tom Green, no doubt about it. Geelong, Jeremy Cameron, we've got Pauline way down there on 14. We've got Hawthorne, we've got Sicily, he's polling with, um, with 17, I apologise. Another great year for him. Melbourne Demons, as you know, Christian Petrarca. North Melbourne is a really interesting one, but Davis Unionaki, without a shadow of a doubt, with 10 votes there. Port Adelaide, as you know, Zaki Butters. Richmond Tigers, Tim Taranto, we've already covered him. St Kilda, Jack Sinclair, just outside the top 10 on our votes. 23 votes for him. Terrific year. Errol Goulden for Sydney. West Coast Eagles, no doubt about it. Timmy e. Kay, Tim Kelly and Marcus Bonapelli for the Doggies. I've really enjoyed that. Let me know what your top 10 is. Include the ineligible ones. It's a bit harsh. But much love, everyone. See you soon. Pom out. Rolling up, Uber, black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's hella bad.